I wanted to review some of the updates to the Adobe Creative Cloud software for 2019. I wanted to show you some of these new or updated tools so you know what's in the latest versions, but also know if you think some of these updates might be worth upgrading to the newer version of the software. This lesson will not cover every single new update, but I'm covering some of the big ones you'll definitely want to know about. We're going to first start with Adobe Photoshop updates for 2019. The most notable change in 2019's version of Photoshop is the change from holding down the shift button to scale an object or photo dimensionally versus not having to hold down the shift button. In 2018 versions and prior, if you wanted to scale something dimensionally, you held down the shift button. Very easy. But now when you hold down the shift button, there you don't have the scale dimensional option. It's reverse. So if you want to scale dimensionally, all you have to do is click and hold. You don't have to hold down the shift button anymore to have it scale dimensionally. This can be a blessing and a curse. For people who have used Photoshop for many years like myself, it's a little bit of a curse because now I have to switch anytime I want to scale dimensionally. I have to um, remember to not hold down that shift button. That can be kind of hard to remember. So now you don't have to do that. I think it's probably a move in the right direction, but for those old time Adobe Photoshop users who are used to holding down the shift button to scale objects, it might be a little bit more of a challenge for you to get used to. We'll go over a lot of these tools as the class progresses, but there's something called the content aware tool, which allows you to magically take background samples and repeat them to be able to cover objects. It almost seems like magic and it's an amazing tool. And in the 2019 update of Photoshop, they made this a lot better. So let's go ahead and make a selection of something we want to blend into the background or to be magically removed. So we don't want this straw anymore. So we're just gonna go ahead and make our selection. And now we're gonna go up to edit content aware fill and in the newest version it'll actually have a preview of how it looks on the right side so this is kind of the green area which is the sampling it takes to be able to magically fill in the inside selection part um, so it's really nice to have this in the 2019 update because now you can make some slight changes to how it samples it and be able to see those live changes on the right so we can go ahead and see that happen live change the settings and we can click ok when we're ready and magically that straw is gone. The next update is one I enjoy quite a bit. In the past, you can have a little bit of a command shortcut called Command Z, and you'll be able to go back a step in history, or you can go back to edit and do undo, and do a simple go back one step in your history panel. So here's your history panel here. These are all the previous steps I've done to get to this black and white point of this photo. But let's say I wanna go back more than just one step. In previous versions of Photoshop, I can only go back one step and then I'd have to go back and manually go undo, 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 undo each time. Now they have the ability to do the shortcut multiple times. So I'm gonna do the shortcut Command Z and I can go back a step and you can see how I went back one step in history. And I can continue to do that over and over and over. Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. And I'm able to go back in history without having to go back and continue to do this one by one, undo, undo, undo. So that's a fabulous update. It's a great time saver. And I'm always having to go back and do more than one step undoing and it's great to be able to do that quick command shortcut or go up and do edit and be able to do it very quickly. Another Photoshop update that's been for the better is the ability to select text by using the move tool. Before you've had to go back to use the type tool, which is right down here to be able to double click and edit text, which was annoying if you can, had to move an object with the move tool and then go back and double click to select. But now you don't need to go back to the type tool to be able to double click and select and edit the text. You can now double click by just having the move tool. So let's say we move our object down here, our type down here, and then we instead of switching back to type, we could just double click and we're still on that move tool, which is really, really helpful. You don't have to sit there and select these tools over and over. With the move tool, I can double click, click and be able to edit text. Another thing I really enjoy is the live preview of blending modes. So we'll learn about blending modes a little bit later in the class, but you get to blending modes in your layers panel in Photoshop. And right now you can go up to normal and before you'd have to click on each one to see the effect that it would have. And now there's live preview. So all you have to do is scroll down through your blending modes and you'll be able to see the effect it has live. 
which is super helpful and saves ton of time clicking. There's been an upgrade to the color panel as well. I'm here in the color panel and I'm going here to more options. And if you go down to color wheel, there's a brand new option. Instead of just seeing the hue cube, which is right here, I'm going to go down to color wheel and you'll be able to select by using different harmonies. So this is a lot easier way to select color. If you're used to affinity designer, you'll notice a lot of similarities to how you can select colors using this method. It's great to have lots of uh, extra additional uh, ways to select color as there's not everybody can relate to the hue cube. Sometimes you need a couple of different ways to select that color. Now for the Adobe Illustrator 2019 updates, another great round of updates. One of my favorites is the Gradient Freeform tool. I'm here in the Gradient panel, which you'll learn a lot more in, uh, later in the class. But you have these traditional methods of gradients, which is a linear gradient. And then you have a radial gradient, which goes from the center outward. And now there's a whole new third option called the Freeform Gradient option. I'm going to click on this and what's great about this, it works similar to gradient meshes if you know a little bit about how those work, but you can kind of see how you can make quite an intricate um, color combination here where they transition outside of these little uh, new areas. You can add new ones, new points. You can take away certain points by deleting them to create quite a beautiful tapestry of gradients. You can even change the radius so you can have a more dramatic impact of this color and maybe a more dramatic or less impact of that color. So it's a pretty cool tool, uh, very helpful, and I just love kind of the way you can create that gradient mesh look um, very quickly and very simply by using the freeform gradient option. Adobe Illustrator 2019 update now gives you the ability to better customize your toolbar here on the left. If you go down to these three dots at the bottom to edit toolbar, you just click on this and you'll be able to drag and drop any new tools that you're missing. Uh, before you'd have to go to window, workspace, and you find a new workspace, and that'll change what icon shown. But now you have full custom ability over this and you can drag certain tools in there that you think would be more helpful than others. Another addition is integration of Adobe fonts more into Adobe Illustrator. So let's go ahead and select a typeface or a font and let's find a new one. You can go up to your font panel and you can select all the ones that are currently installed on your computer or in your Adobe Cloud subscription. You can go to this new tab called Find More and you'll be able to scroll through the entire Adobe fonts library, which is free to you if you have the Adobe monthly subscription. So we can actually see a live preview without even downloading the font, which is super helpful. Another neat new tool for those who are illustrators or those who want to create characters in Adobe Illustrator, um, this Puppet Warp tool is really cool. The tool is right here in the toolbar called the Puppet Warp tool. It almost looks like a, a pin that you would put in the wall. Let's go ahead and select that. We want to select our object first. Our character here, a little robot, and then we'll select the pen tool. It'll create lots of different little points. And what you can do is you can click on these pen points and shift, hold, and drag, and you can almost create a little bit of an animated effect. So you can move the robot's hand up, move it out. You can kind of manipulate, uh, make little small animations or little manipulations in the character. So this is great when it comes to character design. When we want to create something a little bit more organic looking, a little more natural, you can use this tool to kind of do some very small movements with it. So this is called the Puppet Warp Tool, and they made some improvements in the 2019 update. Last but certainly not least is Adobe InDesign 2019 update. So we're here in Adobe InDesign. They have something called Content Aware Fit, that's very helpful when you're trying to crop photos. So I'm going to drag the same photo into three different boxes. Just dragging it on top of the shape and it'll go ahead and adapt. And you'll learn how to do this in the Adobe InDesign section. So now what you can do is go ahead and select all of them. I'm going to right click, go down to fitting, and now there's a new option called content aware fit. And what this is going to do is there's going to be an algorithm and they're going to find out the major facial features and things to focus on in the photo. There's a certain algorithm, algorithm they use, and it's going to automatically crop it the best way possible to focus on that subject matter. 
So this is fantastic if you're not quite sure how to crop it. There's lots of different cropping options in InDesign and this one is a little bit more automatic and kind of helps um, use the system to your, to your benefit. For those who do layout design and want to change from a specific size, so let's say I have this magazine spread and I want to adjust the size a little bit, maybe horizontally or vertically. Before I'd have to manually adjust everything. If I were to shorten this, I'd have to move all of these different items and columns and manually make everything fit into the new space. Well, now you have layout, automatic layout adjustment. So what I'm going to do is go to file and go to adjust layout down here. So I'm going to go ahead and change the size to the new size I want it to adapt to. So instead of being eight and a half by 11 inches, I'm going to make it a lot shorter to eight and a half by nine. So it's going to shorten the layout quite a bit, but what's great is it automatically adjusted the margins. So now everything kind of worked a little bit better. It can work the other way around. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and let's try to adjust it the other way. So I'm going to go down to file, adjust layout, and let's make it a little shorter in width. I'm going to click OK and you can see it automatically adjusting all the elements. So now it's a lot shorter pages, but yet it automatically adapted the margins. It's not perfect, so you have to go back and manually adjust a few things, but it's a whole lot better than having to manually adjust all the text. It kind of automatically um, adapts what you had before in terms of spacing and tries to keep it when you change the size. This is huge. This is a wonderful step in the right direction. I don't have to do so much stuff um, myself. Uh, the computer gets to kind of uh, do a lot of that manual adjustment for me. For those with the 2019 InDesign version, you'll notice they redid the properties panel a little bit and they made it more extensive. They had all of the most frequently used items and they went ahead and made one property panel to rule them all. So now you can make lots of different adjustments on the one panel. So you'll notice that's a little bit different than the previous versions where they had very limited options in the properties panel. Now you can do adjustments, pages, add new pages, all from this one panel. So this is a much more important panel in the 2019 version of InDesign. This lesson does not cover all the minor changes and updates to performance and settings, but I wanted to show you some of the cool new things Adobe is adding to their software each year. It's so important to keep up to date with new tools and software changes, as they can upgrade and speed up your workflow and make your life overall much easier.